Our next speaker is Bill Brown, a Klamath County Commissioner, and he'll be talking to us about water storage. Great. Well, it's, it's nice to be here. Uh, when, Lynn, when I was talking to Lynn G, she said, you know, this is Ron Hathaway's last hurrah, and uh, so much respect for Ron Hathaway, I had to be here. And also, you know, we have our paper, our Herald of News is being delivered in the morning about 5.30, so I got up and uh, read the Herald News, and there was an article in there from Fleece Pace, and uh, in the article, it talked about the love nest that was occurring down in Reading. <laughs> I have never been to a love nest, so I had to get down here early. <laughs> is there another room, Terry, somewhere where... <laughs> also, you know, I just can't imagine Ron Hathaway organizing an event like a love nest. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I'm, I was kind of disappointed, actually, when I walked in. <laughs> Everybody was just sitting there. Uh, anyhow, winter, I, I would also tell you, uh, uh, coming through, winter has struck. So uh, about four big wrecks on the way from Klamath this morning. So on your way home, be careful. Things are going to get icy, and they are getting icy. So be careful of that. But anyhow, just, uh, just real quick, quickly, Ron Hathaway, um, going to be retiring. And uh, just tremendous amount of respect for him and what he's done. And I was thinking uh, a number of years ago, I spent 30 years in education and supervised the uh, vocational programs. And our FFA program started uh, an expert program. And what we would do is we'd go out and interview uh, people with great amount of knowledge, anything from curing pink eye to whatever it may be. I won't tell you how they did that in the old days. But, and they put that on a tape, and you've probably heard about this before, but you know, I think uh, as a solution, before these people with all their knowledge get away from us, and I'm reminded of uh, Alvin Sheen, who was uh, part of our, uh, the stakeholder group, and passed away, he had more knowledge on water and water storage than, than any of us combined. And, and a lot of that left with him. So I think we need to start an expert program so when these folks retire and go have fun, uh, we can interview them, get them on tape, save that knowledge, okay? Now do I have to come up with another solution? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back in the early 80s, uh, Actually, Alvin Sheen and, and uh, Nell Kuna and some of them were county commissioners. They funded a study of water storage possibilities in Klamath County. And a number of uh, possibilities were looked at. It's in a study that we have. And uh, they talked about the Boundary Dam, which was one of Alvin's favorites. And I still, uh, I still like the idea of the Boundary Dam. They looked at the Saican. They looked at Long Lake and others. And... Uh, the most attention has been drawn on Long Lake. Well, what would be the goals of having deep, cool water storage? And one of the, one of the goals that's especially important uh, to us would be sustainable water deliveries. We're looking at a uh, Klamath Lake here. We would pump up into Long Lake, and depending on whether we have a dam or not, without a dam, we could store about 350,000 acre feet. With a dam, we could store about 500,000 acre feet in this area. So how much do we use in a year? About 400, 450,000 acre feet for agriculture. Okay? So that, that uh, sustaining uh, our, our water deliveries to agriculture, we would store the amount that we're going to use. Uh, that, is, that is one of the things. I'll put this in the back, and I apologize for that, but that's the only map we had. And you're doing a great job of holding it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we use about 4 to 7 percent of the water for our egg deliveries in the Klamath. You know, in one day last winter, we had a, a very good winter. In one day, uh, they were sending uh, twice, uh, almost twice as much water out in a day as we were using in the full year for agriculture. The other uh, important aspect of cool, deep water storage will be improved habitat. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Improved fish habitat, water quality, and temperature. The, other, the next one, and it's very dear to my heart, is that we can eliminate the water bank that we are actually really drawing a significant amount 
of our groundwater. That groundwater is important to us. We're affecting the wells in our area, and the sooner we can get off that water bank, which is above and beyond the biological opinion, uh, the better for us. We need to rely on surface water so we know how much we have and we're not affecting groundwater. Those are three, there's, there's many more, but for the sake of time, we'll move on. What do we need in order to accomplish that? Of course we need the, uh, where'd my gal go? No, I'm just kidding, you, you can sit down. <laughs> of course we need to uh, uh, build the program at a significant cost, less than what we thought. Uh, the last numbers I had, and there's probably people from the Bureau of Reclamation here that have finer numbers than myself, but the last numbers that I heard that actually the concerns about uh, the, the fisher, the uh, uh, ability to hold water have been lessened uh, through some studies. They still need to do some more studies. Uh, they feel it'd be around $15 million worth of studying on Long Lake. Uh, we, we would hope we could do it for less, but and uh, an approximation to build would be it was uh, depending on whether or not it hold water and whether you had to fill it up with something up around 700 million and now now they feel they may be able to do it last numbers i had for around 200 to 250 million that's a lot of money but we just talked about the amount of money that we spent on uh, on restoration and this this type of long term storage i feel uh, benefits everyone from the Klamath Basin area clear down to the mouth. So uh, it's, it's a kind of pie in the sky. There's other alternatives we can look at, but this is one of them. The other thing we need is flexibility in our biological opinion so that when we, we store this water, okay, and we have it ready, we would like to send it downstream when it's most appropriate. We don't want to send it downstream when it does no good to the fish habitat, to, to uh, whatever's happening. So, you know, we need that flexibility in the biological opinion to allow us to send water downstream when it's appropriate. The other thing that, that is really needed in order, that, order for this to work is excellent communication. Because, uh, and I was told, I don't have scientific data to back this up. Maybe uh, Troy back there could help us with this one, but I was told that it takes about 10 days depending on uh, the flow as for the water to get from, let's say, the Klamath area down to the mouth. Okay, so in other words, we need communication. Uh, we can't just say, oh, we got a problem down here and, and expect the water the next day. We're going to have to have excellent communication that will allow us to get the water down there when it will do the most good. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. We're doing some other things uh, that that are important to us, and um, one of them is next week on the 15th, we'll be uh, sitting down with a group and looking at our, at our dikes. As you know, we had a little problem with one of our dikes this year, and uh, so we will be looking at our dikes, doing the planning, who's who's responsible, uh, what do we need to do to fix those, what are, uh, you know, what are the alternatives those type of things. So that's very important to work that we're doing up in the Klamath. The dams, a lot of talk about the dams, this is kind of drifting off of my subject of long-term storage, but um, the, the only thing I would tell you is the dam at Keno is off limits. And the reason it's off limits is because that's a very important part of our Klamath project. You take that and, and we've got a problem. And uh, so uh, we can have the discussions on them, and, that, and I'm not going to get into that, but I want to make it very clear that that uh, particular dam uh, controls our Klamath project, and uh, that one is essential to us. I guess that's a, a kind of a wrap-up. Uh, Ten minutes to do, uh, is what we need to do here. But I'll, I'll just finish with a little saying that uh, I've heard many times, and and uh, my family used to use. By the way, um, just so you know, we've spent a little time in Klamath County, my family. My grandson's sixth generation. Six of my eight grand great grandparents were in Langell Valley in the 1880s, so it's been fun for me even growing up to watch the transition and the, the years back when we put 17 uh, dams. My dad built most of them. 
out above Gerber Reservoir to, for storage. So storage is not a, a, a topic that's just somebody just thought up. I mean, this thing started way back in the 50s, and uh, they've been uh, working on that. But I think, I think this kind of sums it up, because he used to say, you know, if the devil can't make you sin, he'll keep you busy. <laughs> and it really feels like we've been very busy, folks. I think this, this, will, uh, this is something, this is a solution that we can get done. And I think uh, we need to move forward on this. And I thank you very much.